And welcome back. Now, I know what you're thinking. You saw the thumbnail and you thought to yourself, this guy's got to be full of because this tool sucks. And you know what? You're actually right. This tool does suck. 20% of the time works every time, right? Yeah, well, it's actually garbage. It's this sucks at flaring brake lines. So we're going to go ahead and put it where it belongs. It's right in the garbage can. Actually, I kind of need this. So I'm just going to take it right back out. I got to return it to the store. And now we have the Cal Van Master inline flaring set. Now, of course, it looks like it's a step in the right direction. You see, uh, it has a few different die. Uh, you know, it has a tubing cutter, but it belongs right in the garbage as well. No, I'm just joking. Um, actually, it is kind of junk. But the problem I'm having with it is that as soon as you put the line in the die and you try to make a flare, it actually just ends up pushing the line right through the die. It doesn't really matter how hard you tighten it down. I've even tried putting it in my vise and it's still the same exact thing. When you go to make the flare, it just pushes it right through. So, yeah, I'm not really sure. And I haven't even used it that many times. I think maybe twice, once, twice, something like that. So if you open up a, a set of die that I haven't really used, you can see it has these teeth and the teeth are there to kind of bite into the line to prevent it from slipping. Now if you look at the 316 line which I have used, it's almost as if the teeth are non-existent. They're just completely like flattened out. So that's why it won't hold anymore and it's really sad because I haven't really used this set that much. And here we have the Fairmont Tools Hydraulic Brake Flaring Tool. And obviously you can see this thing is way more expensive than the other two options that I just had. But the quality is there. You grab it, it feels nice and solid. It doesn't feel like they cheaped out in any single way. You get a nice blow molded case. You get instructions. You get all the dies with it and everything looks nice and solid and it makes you feel like you made a good investment. Now I did end up getting this tool from Eastwood. I got an email from them. I think it was around the Black Friday time. So the sale that they had on this specific tool was free shipping, which by the way isn't much. So you're not saving much on that. But um, I went to their website, looked at the options that I had and I saw the, the flaring tool that's vice mounted, which Eric the car guy has a great review on that and from or based off of his review it looks like the tool works great but it has to be used on a vice and not on the vehicle and most of the time when i work on brake lines they're still attached to the vehicle which is why i opted out for this version of a flaring tool now there is a supply tool that came inside of the case that you could use to tighten down the fastener here but i do recommend just using a wrench it'll make it that much easier to tighten and loosen this fastener but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to use the supply tool because it's what came inside the box. One thing I really liked about the, the die is that they all kind of come with these alignment dowels. And it's just a nice little touch. I mean, it's not a very critical or anything like that. But it's just a nice touch to make sure everything stays aligned. These two things right here are things you're going to need whenever you're working on brake lines. Unfortunately, they're not supplied in the kit. So you're going to have to get them from somewhere else. I stopped at my local auto port store and picked up a few different sizes of lines. I'm going to go ahead and cut down these lines to size. Now it's going to be roughly the same length for each piece. But I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera. I don't want to waste any of your time so you won't have to see me cut each and every line every time I want to make a flare. And pretty much the same exact thing with the reamer or the deburring tool. I'm going to go ahead and use it on all of the pieces that I cut. But I'm going to do it off screen not to waste any more of your time. But you can see the massive difference that it makes by using the tool. The good news is that this thing will make flares all day every day without a problem. So what I'm going to do here is walk through the initial process of how to get this done. I am going to speed up the footage just a little bit, but for the most part, all the steps are here. And since I'm going to be making multiple flares, I don't want to waste anyone's time and, you know, keep showing the same process over and over again. So after this first initial time, I'm going to be chopping up the clips and speeding things up just to get things rolling a bit faster. At this point, you would just go ahead and grab everything that you need. We're using a 5 16th line here, so we're going to grab the appropriate 5 16th die and the OP0 die, which you're going to use this for every single job that you do. It's basically going to set the depth of the line inside of the die to be flush. 
So you're always going to have to use OP0. And then you're going to want to switch over to OP1. OP1 is going to be the actual die that's going to make the flare on the line. Now let's just say that die just happens to be a single flare die. So that would be OP1. And let's just say you want to make like a double flare or something like that. Then you would have to use OP2, which I think it stands for operation. So you would have operation 0, 1, and 2. So I know it seems a little bit complicated, but once you actually had the tool and you start messing around with it yourself, it becomes uh, very easy to use and understand. Now the tubing that we're using right now has all these scratches on it, but they were not caused by the flare that we're doing right now. They were already on the line previously, but the flare did come out very nice as you can see and the tool did a great job at it. And here we're going to make another flare using the 5 16th line again. And this time you're going to see where I used OP0, OP1, and OP2. And another quick tip is whenever you're pumping up the hydraulic system, whenever you fill it bottom out, you are done. You don't need to keep forcing it. If you keep forcing it, you could damage your flare. So at that point, you just back off or you move on to the next operation to continue with your flare. So as you can see the flare came out halfway decent it was actually pretty easy to make really fast and it looks like it's going to be functional but now we're going to move on to using a copper nickel line and this should be even easier to make a flare because the copper nickel is a much softer metal now you may have noticed that i'm using wd-40 to lubricate everything so the instructions do say to lubricate the area where you're going to be making the flare if you're making a brake line, ideally you would want to use a dab of brake fluid right there to lubricate it. But since I'm here working on the bench and just kind of demonstrating how the tool works, this is why I'm using WD-40 as a lubricant. Now just by using OP1 you can see the very nice flare that came out of this copper nickel line. 
but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put it back inside of the die and this time we're gonna use OP2 on it and we're gonna see how it changes the flare. And there you go as you can see it did a great job at making this flare you could not ask for a better one so like I said at the beginning of this segment that the good thing about this tool is that it can make flares all day every day with no problem but there is a downside to this tool and that is what we're gonna talk about next the problem I'm having is that basically any die that's very deep would not release the, the line once you've already made the flare so basically like these uh, quick connect fuel lines and things like that where the line has to go deep inside of the die. Once you make the flare, it's not going to release it. The first time I actually had this problem, I tried it on a steel line and I could not figure out why it would not release. I took it over to the vise and I was there hammering using a chisel and I ended up drilling out the entire line using a 516 drill bit. So the next time around, I got, I did finally get it out. The next time around, I'm over here using the copper nickel line since I figure it's a softer metal. If it happens again, it should be easier to remove. But um, and it is easier to remove. But as you can see, I'm having the same exact problem even with the copper nickel line. Once it makes a flare, it's very difficult to get the the dye off of the line itself, and this is a very big problem. So here's the first line that I had to pretty much force just to remove it and you could see how it's completely destroyed now and it is useless. And here's a die that I had to put in the vise and drill out using a 516 just to get the old line out. You could see how much I damaged my die so I'm not really happy about that. So at this point I'm pretty sure any line that I put inside of that die is always going to get stuck. So what I want to try to do now is uh, just try to figure out a way to remove the die without damaging the lines. Um, First, I'm just gonna go at it with just brute force and I'm gonna use like some sort of a piece of metal I have laying around and just bang on it with a hammer and see how well that works. And we already know how this is gonna work out. It's not gonna work that well without damaging the line. After hitting it a few times with a hammer, it's actually pretty loose now. I could spin it with my fingers, but I'm pretty sure the damage is already done and the, the line itself is bent. I know it's hard to tell but the line is bent it's not completely straight and what we're going to do here is try to fit it inside of the die and as you can see it doesn't want to go all the way in but if I were to grab a brand new piece of line it goes all the way in and it bottoms out without a problem. So it definitely has something to do with uh, when the flare is being made that the metal just kind of expands too much right at the base right there and it gets jammed inside of there. Okay, so so far I think the best method for removing it is using a flathead screwdriver and just prying from every angle. It did seem to come off easier than any other method that I've tried so far, but it's still not perfect. The line is slightly bent. So I think what I'm going to do is try to make up a tool that could remove the die without damaging the line. So if you're interested in seeing that tool, make sure you subscribe for a, a future video and hopefully I could come up with something halfway decent to do this. And that's pretty much it. So you've seen its pros and its cons. I know there's plenty of YouTube videos out there saying that it works great all the time, but I just don't think that's the case. Maybe if you're making brake flares, yes, it does work great for brake flares, 
but when it comes down to other type of things like the quick connects it comes with its problems so hopefully the video helps you uh to make a decision like i said don't forget to check back in later on in the future for more updates on this thing so if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you're considering subscribing don't forget to hit that notification bell and like always thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.